I arrived here in late January 1970 and I mean I knew what a dry river was because I, I'd travelled in northern South Australia so I waited expectantly every time there was a bit of a cloud in the sky there weren't very many that year 1970 it was a wonderful blue sky weather non-stop and I wore shorts for two years without fail and uh, that particular year it didn't look like raining and then the next year it started to build up now and again and every time it did I'd arrived here as a teacher so I'd asked the second year high school students is it going to rain and they'd say no so they'd just know straight away it didn't matter if it was light rain or whatever so they'd say and then in mid-December the last day of teaching at the high school year uh, one of the lads in the class was looking out the window and he said, the tide's coming down. They knew the sense of the rain. They had the feeling for the rain because they'd all, the whole class had grown up here. There weren't any strangers from town in the class. So the tide came down and I remember I stood at the door and said, all right, we'll go down in orderly fashion, which was a joke, you know, but um, when I went down with my class to look at it because there were quite a lot of Americans in town that time the space base was its first year of operation so the Americans who were in town uh, they were very keen to see the tide come down most uh, most of the townsfolk were too it got that sort of thing 22 months without rain at that time it was the longest time without a flow on record and I remember the going down to the edge of the river and the frogs were already hopping out there'd been not, not a sound of them before that the students went out to the front of the river which uh, the old high school was where Anzac High School is so it was up on the river just a little bit upstream and the front was coming down at a slow about a, about a one to two kilometre an hour walking pace I suppose two maybe but it was still spreading across the river and so you had that foam at the front there's always the foam at the front if you remember your own experiences day and it was getting absorbed because the riverbed was so dry it was getting sucked in and spreading at the same time and there's this push coming behind it from the, the it was so dry upstream that the runoff was huge so you had this runoff with nothing much to hold it you didn't have strong grasses and bushes in fact all the way out the airport was almost bare compared to now and then I was amazed that not only it came down in only depth of about six inches, say, or well, that's hand span. But when it reached the causeway, there, there were three or four lads had gone on the other side of it to just to be a little bit cunning and get out of a little bit of work in case we got called back into the classroom. And I said, OK, you ones, come back here to this side. I can see them in my mind's eye just saying yes, sir, and then walking at the pace of the water. So they got down to the... Wills Terrace Causeway, which had the little footbridge there still, but what astounded me there was it actually came down then in a real, by then it was right across the river and it was all soaked in, so you had this, it was like a surge came through and it built up high quickly. Uh, I remember there was one lad had gone out on a, a big tree just opposite the Anzac High School, which had its roots out in the, in the main stream and it was about five metres from the bank and he was watching the other side and it, and it was just building on that and then he had to leap across and he got wet coming back because the water was sort of looked like it was just spreading, it was getting deeper all the time too. You forget about the sense of depth, how quickly it got. So uh, the lads who were on the other side of the river went to come back and it got deeper very quickly, just built up really quickly and they cl instead of coming back which they could have probably they climbed a jolly tree so it was a was a, a not a big gum tree it was easy enough to climb I think one had to be bunked up it but they I think there were three up the tree as I remember and then that was a big rescue job so everyone was starting to worry about them and the headmaster was still teaching that was Alan Field he said you'll teach the last drop well he was the only one still teaching every other teacher and every other student was out looking at it. and the town people were coming down from the town you know that as they do it was 
I remember uh, Harold Little, who's now deceased, but one of the well-known Little family was down there. And Harold lived in this country all his life and was a pensioner out of World War II, but he was down there looking. And people were st all the kids from school were coming down. Uh, that time, I remember, I thought, golly, we're in strife here. Uh, these, these lads are in big trouble up the tree. Uh, the river was rising, it was way over their depth and it was flowing really fast down through towards the gap and probably through to the gap by that time. It was really started to go faster and faster, bigger and bigger. And uh, the council had a big truck of green one of them and they backed that in to effect a rescue. The blokes in the truck threw a rope up to the fellas in the tree and a lad called Roger Bottrell, he caught the rope and uh, Roger would be now around the 50 mark I suppose but he caught the rope and he he was very good at tying knots and that so he tied a good one they threw it back in the truck and so they had a strong rope to the truck but by then the truck itself was kept its engine running and the truck was getting shifted like a jolly big truck it was council truck getting shifted about like, like about a centimetre or so at a time by the buffeting of the water was so strong this, this was only a relatively, like maybe half an hour after the river came down and everyone's focus was on this rescue. So I thought, you know, I could swim tolerably well at that time and I'd been in a surf licensing club so I went downstream a little bit and got my shirt off and my shoes and socks off in case I had to uh, go in and rescue them if they fell out of the tree or the rope didn't work. And uh, there were two other blokes went in to help and they nearly drowned because one of them's foot got caught in the roots and uh, and he would have gone on, like he couldn't hold himself against the current and as his other mate held him up, they got bravery awards for their attempts at the rescue and helping out with the rescue and they deserve them, you know, they're very lucky not to both drown. And, uh, and then Roger Bottrell uh, and the lads, they swung down over this rope, which was it's hard to think how far it was, it might have been 10 metres, it wasn't far, but everyone, you know, everyone's gasping and sort of waiting and you know, it was like any film you ever see where there's, what's the catastrophe going to be, but they all got through and the council blokes on the back pulled them on board and everyone on the banks cheering every time and they, everyone got out safely and then they, uh, they got the truck out, you know, the truck was nearly off the edge by then and they got the truck out and rescue and everyone cheered. By then the rain had set in and it was just coming, you know, sluicing off the roofs, sluicing off the landscape because it was so dry. And then uh, I remember an American girl, uh, I think her name was Marcia Douglas, she was a Texan. She stood under the drain pipe and let it pour all over and, uh, and lots of students did because they was just sort of a dramatic event in the town that had not occurred in the, that previous 22 months.